As others will have, to a number of positive updates for women completing International Women's Day today, the launch of the Women's Health Action Plan, the rollout of free period products and further education, the introduction of gender pay gap reporting, research commissioned into gender-based violence against people with disabilities, and we also had the first public sitting last week of the Gender Equality Committee. Um, but uh, we are making progress, but it remains a particularly difficult International Women's Day, and there's two groups that I want to highlight in my contribution today the vulnerability of women fleeing their homes and countries, fleeing the dangers of war, and the second group of women who are in Ireland trafficked and involved against their will in prostitution in Ireland. So many colleagues have spoken today with passion and solidarity about the women of Ukraine facing unimaginable challenges today. Women who have moved and are moving across Ukraine with children, with their parents, with their families, women leaving their partners behind as they rush to get to safety, women who remain hiding in Ukraine, hiding themselves and their children from the brutal, indiscriminate violence of Russia and its illegal, unwarranted invasion of a democratic state and the murder of its civilians that we have seen so repeatedly and so desperately over the past 13 days. These women are at huge risk today. And it must be said, uh, many remain at risk even where they reach the safety of the border, the relative safety of the border. We have to remember, sadly, that global conflict has many, many dark reaches, reaches, many dark opportunities for criminals to prey on the vulnerable, and we must be alive to that risk too. Today, with that concern, I met with the lead researcher from the Sexual Exploitation Research Programme of the Geary Institution, UCD, Ruth Breslin, specifically about that concern, vulnerable women at a time of war. The concern of the Geary Institution, the reports that they're getting of women and children in desperate circumstances, is that they're being offered, some women, not all of course, but some women are at risk of being offered lifts and accommodation from strangers, and there are reports already of women disappearing from view. This, of course, isn't a new phenomenon. When it comes to trafficking for sexual exploitation, one of the greatest risk factors for women and girls is being a refugee, fleeing natural or man-made causes. Exploiters will always prey on such vulnerability. The Sexual Exploitation Research Programme have received many concerning reports and incidents of sexual violence and exploitation. And as a parliament and as a member of the EU, we do need to be alive to that risk as we respond to the humanitarian need of people coming from Ukraine. But of course, it's just as important to highlight the risk to women in other countries. This morning, I had the opportunity to hear from Fauzwa Kufi, the first woman second deputy speaker of the Afghan parliament, the head of the Afghan parliament's Women Affairs Commission, a staunch advocate for women and a Nobel Peace, nominee, Peace Prize nominee in 2020, to name a few of her achievements. We were both panellists on a Department of Foreign Affairs Women's Day event host, um, and Ms. Kufi used her time to talk about the extraordinary existential risk to women in Afghanistan. The second group of vulnerable women I want to highlight today in, in, in the Dáil, Ciancorla, is those women working uh, uh, in prostitution in Ireland today. Ciancorla, at 12pm today, on International Women's Day in Ireland, there were 744 women for sale on Ireland's main prostitution website. 744 women in Ireland alone. Again, checked and confirmed by the Sexual Exploitation Research Programme in UCD, and 90% of those women are migrants. Buyers, as, as deputies will be aware, select the women whose bodies they want to purchase access to, sexual access, many returning later to the same site to rate each woman out of star five stars on her physical appearance, the satisfaction she gave, and the value for money she provided. Some will also write details about the woman's appearance and the various acts that were purchased from her, reviewing each woman not as a person but as a product. That's today. More than 90%, as I said, Ciancorla, of those women are migrants. And the research carried out by the Sexual Exploitation Research Programme shows that most of those women are young, vulnerable, drawn or forced into the sex trade by poverty, coercion or a combination of both. Many are fleeing violence elsewhere only to meet new violence in Ireland, daily violence by perpetrators, members of organised crim crime, criminal gangs and others. For fear of the criminals that control them, these women often fear Gardaí, whom have made so many renewed efforts to help and offer welfare interventions, importantly highlighted by these women who have engaged with SERP and UCD as important and positive uh, interventions, notwithstanding their general fear of the Gardaí. Um, because of what they have been told. The HSE's Women's Health Service is a lifeline for specialist health service for women in prostitution, and interviews conducted by them with women whose services demonstrate the extent to which the sexual and mental health of these women is harmed. This is what's happening in Ireland, in our modern Ireland today, on International Women's Day, where women's rights are meant to be equal and protected. Ireland's laws are currently under review. Ireland's laws to combat this highly exploitative trade are currently under review. 
for the safety and well-being for Irish women, for migrant women who have come here for a better life. It is so important that we target every element of the trade. Sex buyers, pimps, traffickers, the organised crime gangs profiting from the abuse of vulnerable women. Women are not products capable of review. Vulnerable women, rem women remain at risk daily and we need to be aware of that risk at this time in all forms to other women fleeing violence today from Ukraine and make sure that the steps that we take to protect them at every point in their journey seeking refuge in Ireland and across Europe have that risk at its, at, at, as part of that. Thank you, Ken Thank you very much, Deputy Colonel McNeill, for a valuable contribution.